Have you ever asked God, what must I do to be saved? Hi, I'm Bob Wilkin with Grace Evangelical Society, and I have some good news for you. I had been in a cult group for many years, and I had asked God to save me, I had invited Jesus in my heart, but I never asked him what must I do to be saved until a friend came to me at the beginning of my senior year in college and said, is it possible your view of the gospel is wrong? That led me to pray about it, and I ended up coming to faith in Christ and knowing for sure that I had everlasting life. In the 50 years I've been a believer, I've shared my faith with thousands of people. And my experience has been that most people who come from a Christian background, which is most of the people in America, that most people come from a faith plus works tradition. In other words, they believe that in order to be saved, they must believe in Jesus Christ and they must persevere in faith and they must turn from their sins and live a godly life and persevere in godliness. And I found that when I talk with them about the message of John 3.16, that whoever believes in him will not perish but has everlasting life, they reject it as easy believism or cheap grace. And they're often not willing to even consider it because it conflicts with their tradition. Well, what we find in Scripture is that people should ask God, what must I do to be saved? And if they do, God will reward them by sharing with them the saving message, the faith alone and Christ alone message. For example, think about Acts chapter 16, verses 30 and 31. There's a jailer in the city of Philippi, and he's evidently from a pagan background, knows nothing about Christianity, but then these Christian preachers come to town and they're arrested, and he's to hold them in his uh, jail, and he puts them in the stocks, he hears them singing, he hears them evidently talking to other prisoners about Christ, but he doesn't yet get the saving message, but he knows they're talking about this some type of salvation uh, and being with God forever, and he's still not asking until there is this earthquake and all the cells are open and he thinks that the prisoners have escaped and he's going to be tortured and he's about to die, he's about to take his life and Paul says don't hurt yourself and only then does he say what must I do to be saved and as a result of that Paul tells him and he comes to faith and is born again. We find lots of examples of this in scripture in Acts chapter 10 there's a uh, God-fearing Gentile, uh, a centurion named Cornelius. And while he's praying, God sends an angel to him to tell him to send for Simon Peter, who will tell you words by which you must be saved. And so Peter comes, shares the saving message with him, and he's born again. He's born again as a result of him seeking God and asking God what he must do to be saved. Earlier in Acts 16, before the Philippian jailer, in Acts 16, 9, Paul receives a vision about a Macedonian man, a man from Europe, who's crying out and asking for Paul to come and to tell him about Christ and the way of salvation. And of course, God honors that by sending Paul and his team to begin the evangelistic ministry in Europe. In Acts chapter 8, there is an Ethiopian official, an Ethiopian eunuch, who is coming back to North Africa from uh, Jerusalem. He's been there for the feast days and he's going back and he's reading about the suffering servant in Isaiah 52 and 53. 
And Philip the evangelist is led by the Holy Spirit to come up and talk to this man. And he says, do you understand what you're reading? And he says, no, how can I unless someone guides me? And so he invites Philip up into his chariot. And Philip preaches Christ to him, and the man comes to faith in Christ. If you're a person who is not sure that you are eternally secure, that you have everlasting life, and no matter what happens, you'll never perish, then I urge you to ask God, what must I do to be saved? Ask God to show you the truth. And then I would encourage you to read the Gospel of John and continue to pray and ask God to show you. Can it really be as simple as believing in the Lord Jesus Christ? Is it really as simple as John 3.16 seems to say? And if you're a person who already knows that you have everlasting life and you are secure forever, you can never lose that life, then I would strongly encourage you to share this wonderful message with your family, your friends, your loved ones, your co-workers, with everyone who is open, and tell them about the simple promise of everlasting life to whoever believes in the Lord Jesus Christ. Share the simple John 3.16 message with them. And urge them to ask God, is it really that simple? What must I do to be saved? The Lord Jesus said, ask and you will receive. Let's encourage people to ask so that they indeed might receive. If you like what you heard today, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and remember, keep grace in focus. I love you guys.